your brief into the company interaction first. Um, <laughs> we started the company in 2010, uh, born in Tokyo. Uh, we were developing a network virtualization. Uh, it's called Windowman, uh, fully open source uh, by using the uh, overhead technology at the time. After that, uh, we did the pivot of business focus to edge computing for industry priority. And in 2019, uh, Sony acquired us, and now we are from until process comes in the area of Sony and content solutions. Our pedigree is in uh, uh, distributed uh, computing and the system, <coughs> uh, scape system. Uh, we are now um, provide a key technology to Sony uh, for the coming era of the era. Next, uh, area news. Uh, as you may not know, uh, Sony has uh, not less than 16% of uh, market share in visual sensor, as well as uh, related, uh, various related uh, visual technology assets. They provide an eight areas uh, solution platform uh, over the world. What is of eight areas give us to our wedge project? A uh, couple of reasons comes from uh, actual real use cases. Uh, I don't want uh, uh, to mention all about many people. One is they like to have tiny ML run uh, 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 on the uh, IBEX 500, which Sony invented world first uh, uh, ESP stack in its uh, single sensors. Two uh, is uh, they like to accomplish uh, sensor visual world where as a non RGB sensor can run on a uh, low capability device like uh, MCU uh, with Argos. The last one, uh, this is more critical. Since edge AI industry vertical requires security, uh, they have to secure um, plastic execution environment for uh, edge native uh, applications. That's why our uh, uh, waste project was formed. So, some challenges of development for the resume of the domain. One is development in C is hard. You know, maybe not for everybody, but for some, some people it's hard, especially in the better world where there's very little memory and we've lost all that memory. And code is not very portable per se. Because of the architecture, is one thing, but also because of the OS. Like, there's no standard OS that's super fragmented in the embedded space. And uh, memory isolation, which we take for granted on the Linux on servers, does not exist in microcontrollers. So everything is running in real mode, essentially. Um, these are tosses, if you call it an operating system, you know, aren't designed for multi user at all. So this is all interface, it's really not like secure well due to capabilities and such. And dynamic loading is something that's not supported at all. Like you need to recompile and rebuild the entire OS image to, to make a software change. And if it is, it's not safe because you might load the code that you know, crashes. Um, and the last one, not that important, but the development language, you know, might be completely different between your cloud application and the embedded. And the embedded is going to be C, and the cloud is going to be something else, probably. Another point here is, you know, some pain points of IoT devices and, you know, vision cameras, like security cameras. One is, after deploying the product, after shooting the product, Typically, you don't change the functionality, like, ever. That's it. Um, and on the security front, it's practically not possible to find vulnerabilities all ahead of time. Like, that would be great, but it's not going to happen. So, you need the passion. So, these are some of the motivation, motivating factors for what we are going to do. Three goals of, of our projects. Um, one is to solve these uh, security and isolation problems. Actually, I've been there for um, and then, that was like our initial motivation. Let's solve this isolation sandbox issue. And then we started getting the idea of, hey, we could try to enable like a developer ecosystem by creating a, a plugin architecture and SDKs and so on based on this because we can do that uh, potentially in different language. But what is, what is which? You know, obviously the W stands for WebAssembly at this point uh, at the edge. So which is uh, a couple of things. It, it integrates the entire IoT uh, device lifecycle. So it runs alongside an IoT platform. We didn't develop the IoT platform per se. We can use uh, like 
we have to use a, a project called Space for our development being a part of that. And then the the system uh, also has this this part of creating the application, deploying the application, and then doing the whole lifecycle. Now, since that, that's quite generic, that, that part, right? But since we're dealing with uh, vision sensors mostly, we developed this model called the Vision Sensing Application, which, again, in the SDK, uh, you can, the unit developer has an access to um, certain interfaces like controlling the sensor, uh, accessing uh, image manipulation uh, functions that we've actually employed with Open CV at the moment, um, and essentially you can break down the application into multiple modules and that are kind of decoupled so that you can, you know, partially for code reuse and or also partially for, for better isolation. So when it consists of two parts, one is the wedge cloud, which is kind of running there on the server side alongside the, the back end of the, of the IoT platform that has a REST interface and so on. That's what the developer would interact with the REST API uh, to you know, register modules, create a deployment manifest, you know, have it scribing the application and the, the, do the lifecycle management for the application. And one important point is that uh, we do AOT compilation. And so that all happens in the cloud you know, So the, that system knows about the different target uh, device types. And it figures out what to, uh, you know, which compiler tool chain it has to use, you know, that all that is running uh, the pod. You know, basically it's, I think we've seen this a couple of times, the agent basically racks the, the web on the uh, runtime and calls it in a particular way and exposes certain uh, native uh, libraries and, and uh, you know, the mice drivers for what is needed. We use WAR because that's what fits on, on tiny devices. And again, I should mention that we're dealing with a variety, potentially a variety of uh, operators. But at the moment we run on Linux, you know, just because we do development there at other. And uh, primarily we use a real-time OS called NUPX, N-U-P-T-X. Um, that's because that's what uh, Sony's using for various uh, uh, hardware platforms. But we can support others. And then we have, besides Waxy, we have Wedge Service of APIs, which includes a couple of different things. Uh, one is sensor interface. And this is, uh, we will try to standardize this. We're going to make a proposal by the sensor you know, for controlling you know, sensors. Uh, Hopefully, all kinds of sensors, but particularly you know, CMOS uh, image sensors. Um, and communications, so we can have very specific communication, both the uh, module and module communication, which currently is a bit custom. You know, hopefully, we can use components for that when, when that's set already. Uh, but also, like off the box communication, like device to device, pub cell sub type of uh, communication, as well as uh, HTTP and access to lost storage and so on. So we have various types of uh, primitives like that. And then we have WASI and then as well, which is if there's a um, like an accelerator on the device, uh, or even if it's in software, you know, we use WASI and to uh, in printing. Although I think software is a little different if you want to learn about that, there's something on, on WASI. That actually has an inline accelerator where the image just passes through the DSP and then it comes out the other side. So it's not like a, a, you have to call, you know, it just happens on every frame, it's triggered. And we also have some data storage of primitives like uh, log storage access on the cloud and local data. And open CD, because we need to do image manipulation for certain things. If you uh, went to the workshop, you know, you saw already done So I mentioned uh, that if we wanted to provide these SDKs and different languages, so what are some of the challenges of, of polyglot development in Wazo? Um, I think probably you all know very well. Uh, at the moment, these types of scripting languages are not the, the ones that are well supported in, in Wazo, right? Um, not yet. Especially Python, not Python. And Python happens to be the one that's really, really uh, preferred by you know AI and machine learning development. So we really want we really want Python um, at some point. Um, also because we discovered something that's interesting. Speaking of the, the program language being different on the cloud and the device, is that the training loop and the inferencing, you know, are using different code, you know, and then sometimes that code should be exactly the same, but it's actually implemented differently, and sometimes I get to the stuff. So that's something we want to want to correct. So we did implement something uh, that we call PyOS, and it's not very original, and name clash with somebody else with PyOS. Uh, but essentially, uh, we have a limited support, you know, of uh, of Python uh, 
in our module framework. Uh, but um, we want to move to something much more supportive and, and standardized as soon as possible. And what's, going, what's coming up next? Uh, well, we are definitely going to stay engaged with this uh, ecosystem. It was a really great conference. Um, we are contributing to WAN or upstream, so we have uh, dedicated developers for that. We would like to open source which, uh, and uh, you know push our standardized uh, YC uh, extensions like YC sensor into, into the community and add more support for various sets of MCUs, uh, especially like this prime uh, and our other our possible size nines. Thank you.